Here is the transformation technique for continuous random variables and in this particular case there will be a single random variable x and we are trying to figure out the distribution of the uh, random variable y equals g of x. So here is the theorem. Let x be a continuous random variable with probability density function f sub x of x defined on the support script A. Let y equals g of x be a one-to-one -one transformation that maps script A to script B with an inverse x equals g inverse of y for every y an element of B and let dx dy be continuous and non-zero for every y an element of B. Then the probability density function of y equals g of x is f sub y of y equals f sub x of g inverse of y times the absolute value of dx dy for y an element of b. Now incidentally this quantity right here, the absolute value of dx dy, when we get up into two or more dim dimensions, this will become the absolute value of the Jacobian matrix. So that will be the generalization that will occur a little bit later when we get up to um, more than just one random variables. But for now, it's just the absolute value of dx dy. This formula looks exactly like the discrete case, except for this additional term out here. And in the proof, you'll see why that term appears. So here is the proof. Now there is a case 1 and there is a case 2. In case 1 we assume that y equals g of x is a monotone increasing function and that means that dx dy will be greater than 0. Case 2 will be y equals g of x is monotone decreasing and in that case dx dy will be less than 0. So in this particular case the CDF of Y will, by the definition of a CDF, I'll go ahead and label that here, by the definition of a CDF, you get the probability that the random variable Y is less than or equal to Y. And you can replace Y with G of X because you know Y equals G of X is the transformation of interest. And you are allowed to go from here to here because you have a one-to-one -one function. So that is part of the reason you can do this. And you can take G inverse of both sides of this inequality and you get this. Now the probability that X is less than or equal to this quantity is just the CDF evaluated at that quantity. And that is exactly the definition of the cumulative distribution function, this time going in the other direction. So finally, when you differentiate this CDF using the chain rule, you will wind up with the PDF of Y. Notice we're differentiating here. So we go, we're going from CDF to PDF, and that will be the derivative of F sub Y of Y and using this string of equalities that is the derivative with respect to y of fx of g inverse of y and when you take the derivative of the cdf you get the pdf evaluated at g inverse of y and the derivative of g inverse of y is dx dy notice no absolute values necessary here now in case two we know that dx dy will be less than zero and so in that case, what you do is you put on absolute value bars, and that accommodates both of the two different cases, and that completes the proof.